diode so this diode is also called as a hot carrier diode the short key barrier diode is called as a hot carrier diode when it is powered by s because conduction of electrons on n side gains sufficient energy to cross the junction and enter the metal so when electrons are going to hit the metal you know it is going to produce heat so whenever you are going to electrons are going to hit the metal it's going to produce heat right just to refer that because just to uh, make a correlation that current flow is going to happen from semiconductor to metal this diode is going to be called as a hot carrier diode just uh, normal terminology since these electrons plunge into the metal with large energy they are commonly called as hot carriers why they are called as hot carriers because you are going to provide energy in the form of forward bias and with the forward bias energy these uh, with the forward bias energy these electrons can easily cross the these electrons can easily cross the depletion region and go and uh, plunge into the metallic region so that is the reason why the electrons are called as hot carrier the diode is called as a hot carrier diode so in exams if they ask explain the characteristics of hot carrier diode then you have to explain the feature of short key diodes okay the current in the pn junction is controlled by the diffusion of minority carriers in pn junction whereas in short key diode it is purely because of flow of majority carriers that's what i say in pn junction you have the concept of drift current diffusion current all those things are there but in short key barrier diode because you don't have the concept of minority carriers here the current flow is going to be purely contributed by the majority carrier flow over the metal semiconductor junction so the reverse saturation current for a short key diode is larger than that of the pn junction diode because you we have to told that the minority carriers are completely absent and also the time taken by minority carriers to cross the junction the storage time is going to be zero so which makes the minority carriers to cross the junction easily contributing for an early current but this phenomenon is uh, absent in pn junction diode because in pn junction diode the doping is less and the depletion region is also going to be larger and larger which will result in uh, electrons requiring more amount of energy to cross the depletion region but here since the depletion region is very very small and also the minority carriers are completely absent so the reverse saturation current for short key diode is very very high when you compare the pn junction diode and the last point is that most advantageous point for short key barrier diode so it has a very small turn on voltage and shorter switching time than pn junction diode that is evident from the graph your pn junction diode turns on only after 0.7 volt but this diode turns on immediately after 0.4 volt so that is the first thing smaller turn on voltage so with 0.4 volt is enough to turn on your short key barrier diode whereas 0.7 volt is required to turn on your pn junction diode and it also have a shorter switching time than pn junction which means that short key barrier diodes can accept sudden change in state from on to off and off to on they will change their states quicker than pn junction diode that is called a switching time so when you turn on and turn off your device frequently your short key barrier diode can understand that and respond quickly but your pn junction diode takes a lot of time to understand the change in state and it will respond a little bit late that is going to be called as your switching time okay so the application short key barrier diodes can be used for rectification of signals of frequencies over 300 megahertz so high frequency applications the short key barrier diode is very very useful so when you study when you go to higher semester 6 semester 7 semester 8 semester you will be frequently coming across short key barrier diode used in cv several applications so all these short key barrier diodes are predominantly aimed at operators and at microwave frequencies so it is useful common it is commonly used in switching power supplies at the frequency of 20 gigahertz and i told you microwave frequency right so anything about 1 gigahertz is a microwave frequency so the common application of these uh, uh, short key barrier diodes are going to be for switching the power supplies at 20 gigahertz and also the it has its low noise figure finds application in sensitive communication receivers like radar and we have seen that uh, the noise factor is completely minimum in short key barrier diode so in environments where you have lot of noise and the performance from the device is expected to be very good 
in those places these short key barrier diodes will find an application because the noise figure is good their noise characteristics are beautiful so in so such cases where your uh, receiver has to be very sensitive uh, to noise in that case i can use the short key barrier diode for sure because it has a low noise figure and it can uh, it can easily reject noise uh, where, where, which is present in the environment and it is also used in clipping and clamping circuits and also in computer gating this is some of the very minor application of uh, short key barrier diode but the major application is going to be in the microwave region high frequency region where i need devices to do, do a lot of functionalities uh, which cannot be done by other devices because the turn in uh, the turn on time is larger or i can say switching time is larger but in the short key barrier diode the switching time is less the turn on time is less and uh, it can easily the noise is also less so it finds quite a lot of applications in high frequency regions also it is going to find a lot of applications in high frequency regions okay so now any doubt in a short key barrier diode so i'm going to pause for a few seconds any queries you have in short key barrier diode you can ask So you, when you read short key barrier diode, you have to relate it with uh, metal semiconductor junction and read. So we have studied metal semiconductor junction, then we have came to gallium arsenide, and again we are into metal semiconductor junction, right? So whenever you read for your exams, you have to read topics which are having the same correlation. If you are, if you read in that way, your understanding will be very good. Okay. So even the topics are very disjoint as given in your syllabus, but you have to pick topics which are literally depending on the same concept or logic and you have to learn it accordingly. 